writes, what good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds, can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you say to him, go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Someone will say, you have faith and I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. You believe that there is one God? Good, great. Even demons believe that and shudder. <laughs> amen, amen. I want to lift from the text and we'll talk a little bit about faith in action. Faith, faith in action. Faith in action. Amen. How do we know? How do we know, people of God, when we are seeing, when we are seeing uh, Christian faith? How do we know? How do we know when we are seeing uh, Christian faith? Amen. Has ever been a time, ever been a day, amen, that we, that we, that we need to see, amen, the very faith, amen, of Christian people is in the hour in which we now live. Amen. Earthquakes everywhere. War in the Middle East. Amen. Thousands of American soldiers who are now, amen, in the Middle East, sitting out there on carriers and other places, and, and, and hatred, evil. Uh, we see here at home, uh, uh, we see hurting people and people without, amen, and we are wondering, we are wondering, where is God? Where is God? If there ever been a time uh, uh, for people of God uh, to exercise their faith, now is that time, amen. Now, now, now is the time for us, as they would say, what, to be about it? That's how they say it? It, 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 it's, it's in that, it's in, we in that, we in that arena where, 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 where it's time, it's time, right, at, at, to, to, to be about it. At, at some point, at some point, amen, you got to do it, right? You just got to do it. We, 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 my, my oldest daughter was shocked. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was talking to her about growing up in an environment where, where, where people say you got to be about it. By the time you get 18, uh, uh, when you finish high school, we're going to put you out. <laughs> Could you imagine growing up, hearing that you're in middle school? You counting your birthdays. They telling you that when you're 18, uh, you won't be eating my Cheerios and milk uh, for free. She was like, it was, it was, it was like that. Uh, uh, they, at, at 18, it was time for you to be about it. Whether you got the lesson or not, it's, it's showtime. Uh, it's showtime. Uh, 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 this Christian faith thing, uh, uh, faith is time, uh, people of God, I believe, for us, if we're going to claim Jesus, uh, it's time for us to put our faith into practice. It's time to put it, it's time to put faith into practice. Um, uh, Jesus, uh, doing his ministry, he ran into these Pharisees and teachers of the law all the time uh, that, they, that they were coming across as though they were more righteous than everybody else. Uh, uh, and it's, it's a scene in, in the gospel writings where Jesus' disciples are hungry and, and, and they're, 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 they're going about their way and they walk through a place and they, and they take some items to eat. And so they're eating 
uh, without washing their hands. And, and these self-righteous uh, Pharisees and teachers of the law, that they remember that in their tradition, uh, in their tradition, you ought to wash your hands uh, uh, before you eat. Uh, 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 and Jesus said of them, uh, he, you know, he said, now y'all, he said, now y'all, here's y'all guilt that, that y'all honor God with your lips. You, you honor God with your lips, he says, but your hearts are far from him. And, and, and because your heart is so far away, your worship or your church experience is in vain. Did, did, that, did that come through? That, that, that Jesus is saying you could shout on Sundays at St. John. You could be the loudest person <clears throat> on any Sunday morning. Uh, 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 and, and Jesus says that make sure that you're not just honoring me with your lips. And I, I, I tell you, people of God, I hate to say it this Sunday morning, but, 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 but it seems like, I, I'm getting old, so it seems like that many churchgoers are just lip service. We just have enough Jesus to, 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 to have a form of godliness. Huh? Huh? We, 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 we need, we need some of that Marvin Gaye faith. Ain't nothing like the real thing. I see your picture hanging on the wall, but it don't. <laughs> we, we need some faith that, 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 that is not, not just, you know, hanging on the wall. Just, we just can't have pictures of God. And pictures of what the Christian life look like, but no realness. No realness. Uh, uh, faith, faith in action. Uh, I was reading, I was looking at uh, King Hezekiah. King Hezekiah was one of the most faithful kings of Judah, was King Hezekiah. And the Bible said here in 2 Kings, it was uh, in chapter 8, I believe, 8, 18, chapter 18, where it said that King Hezekiah, it said he trusted God. And whenever we say that we trust God, you're really saying that I have faith in God. When, when you say you trust God, you're saying you have faith in God. And, and, and King Hezekiah is on record saying that he trusted God. Well, how do I know? Because King Hezekiah was not like his daddy. His father Ahaz was not like other kings who faithfully followed God, that when his daddy became the king, his daddy, his daddy sold the furniture that was in the temple. He shut the doors to the church, and he allowed people to, to build uh, structures yeah, in, uh, in every high place and, and, and worship God the way they wanted to. Uh, and if we're not careful today that, that many of us that think God allowed COVID to come along so we can close the doors to the church and that we can just do, do Jesus on every pillar and every post. But, but when Hezekiah came along because he trusted God, the Bible said that he tore down tore down all of the, all the high places, the stuff that his daddy did who did not trust God. He come along, he's not paying God lip service. He's not just glad he's the king, but he's God's king. And the evidence that he's God's king, the evidence that he have faith in God is seen in his actions because he tear down all the high places. 
Hallelujah, somebody. He even, look, he even broke up, yeah, the snake that, 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 that Moses had put together when they were in the wilderness. They had this snake that, that, that they had to what? They, they, they began to worship it because God told them if you, if you get bit by the serpent and when you look at this snake, you, you will live. And so as time go on, they didn't turn the snake into a god and now they're burning incense. They burn an incense to some snake that 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 they got look sitting up on a pole or something that that reminding them of the wrong god in the wrong way. And when Hezekiah became king, he crushed the snake. If you're not careful, your faith you'll be worshiping stuff that God used to bring you out instead of having faith in the God. <laughs> Help me, somebody. Ha uh, uh, here it is, y'all. I don't want to do all this kind of preaching. But 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 James, James is is the half brother of Jesus. And 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 so he's the oldest of married children, uh, not counting Jesus. Uh, he's not one of the twelve. It doesn't matter when you come in church. <laughs> Long as when you come in, huh, you operating out of your faith. Yeah, the Bible says that James was a pillar of the church. That 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 when when Peter got out of jail in Acts chapter twelve, it was Peter that told his friends. He said, "Make sure you tell James, I'm out." <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, when James got saved, look, he was serious about some Jesus. Hallelujah. And so when James penned his letter, yeah, yeah, we often say that this letter is for Christians who want to mature. That, that this is for grown folk, James. James ain't for young Christians, for, you know, little, little, little young Rudy Poos just come along that can't take no hard stuff. Uh, uh, because look, look at here, you got to be mature to shout off what he say in the first chapter. He began by saying he's a servant of God, amen, the Lord, yeah, yeah, Jesus the Christ. And he said, I'm writing to the 12 tribes, yeah, who are scattered abroad, uh, who are scattered, he says, in the nations. Uh, and then he says, you ought to count it. Here's where it messed me up. You ought to count it, he says, pure joy. Not, not joy, but shown up joy. Real joy. You ought to count it pure, real joy. He said, whenever you what? Find yourself. Huh, huh. Whenever you find yourself facing, he says, many trials. Hallelujah. He said, don't get it twisted. He said, that, that, that trials don't come to mess you up. That the trials of life, he said, is to test. To test our faith. Is there anybody up in here on this Sunday morning? Say, 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 look, James, James says that, that God let trials happen. God let trouble come your way. Amen. As Dr. Booth, the late Dr. Booth would say, to see what you're working with. <laughs> you don't know what you're working with. You don't, you don't know you know how to pray. You don't know you got faith. You don't know you got good religion until God cut the lights off. To God give you some bad lab reports. Huh? Until your friends turn their back on you. Until hellhounds get on your trail. You don't know you got good religion. And that trials in life, hell in life, he said, you ought to count it pure joy because, because what? It's only the testing of our faith. Huh? Faith is how we persevere. You can't persevere unless you got some faith. Hey Amen. You got to have faith to, to persevere. You got to, you know, I grew up in a house, 14 kids, so we wasn't wealthy, you know, but we really wasn't poor. But, but, but faith make your mama, when she cooking, she, she never said, I don't have enough. <laughs> but I can tell by my plate that it wasn't a lot. <laughs> Huh. 
I was amazed at my mama. She had cooked one of them sirloin steaks. I got them flat steaks with that brown gravy. Hey, Amen. She had a cast iron skillet. You know, 14 kids. She ought to have maybe three or four skillets or maybe three or four steaks. She had one big steak in that skillet that she was smothering down with a brown gravy. Talk to me if you can. And she ain't never say that she didn't have enough, but some kind of way when she, when she fixed those plates, some kind of way she had a way of pinching off that. Ha, ha, ha. She a pinch off. Look, look, you didn't get full from the meat. <laughs> but you had to experience it though. You're, we'll push it off on the side and eat our gravy and rice and, and little vegetables and two slices of bread and drink that pre sweetened Kool Aid and my last scoop. Ha, ha, ha. I had sirloin steak on the last scoop. Huh, huh. But she taught me perseverance. She, she, so she taught me to learn how to thank God for what you got. Don't, don't complain about. You only got one sirloin steak. Look, thank God that there's a steak in the skillet. Huh, 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 huh. County pure jaw. Huh, huh. Whenever you find yourself huh, messed up. In life, uh, James tells us, I'm going to get out of your way, that, that it's not enough for you and I to claim faith. Huh? Claiming faith is not enough. Claiming your Baptist, claiming your Methodist, claiming your church of God in Christ, claiming your non-denominational, not enough. Huh? Going to the most popular church in town, not enough. Sitting at the feet of the archbishop <laughs> or the bishop, not enough. Uh -uh. Knowing, knowing, yeah, 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 Christian, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, Hollywood personality types, not enough. James, James says that, that you can claim it, but it don't mean you got it. Huh? Huh? He says, James, James says, claiming faith, huh, huh. claiming a faith, he says, without any deeds. And, and the heavy theological question that he raises, he said, can, can faith without deeds save you? That's the theological question for you and I to ponder today. The answer is no. I know that might shock you because some of y'all said you told me the other day that, that faith was all I needed. Now here you come on this Sunday telling me that faith alone, not enough. Every Sunday you quote Romans 1 and 17 that the just live by faith. What are you trying to do to me, Reverend, this Sunday? I was with you until this Sunday. What James', is, James argument is, is, is that he, he, he gives us a, an example with what he's talking about. He says, he says, he says, he says, faith, he says, without deeds, is dead. And, and James says, James says, I'm going to give you an easy one. He says, suppose a brother or a sister came to your church today. And they, without clothes and without food. Uh, and, and the best you can do is give them one of the lines from Janet Jackson. I wish you well. Y'all remember, I wish you well. <laughs> Wasn't that Janet? Y'all too saved to get with me, huh, y'all? I'm the only one know that Janet said that. Come on now, Baptists. Y'all going to heaven anyway, but... Huh, huh, huh. 
Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, look, there's a whole lot of Christians won't admit it, but when we see people in the world in which we live that, that have needs, and the best that we can do as a body of Christ is wish them well. He said, I, I, look, I wish you warm. <laughs> I wish you well fed. Huh? And that's how church people sound a lot of times when, when God puts somebody in our path that need us to exercise some faith. Look, we put them in our path and we do just what James said. We boast about church. We just left church. But time, look, God placed something in front of us that require you and I to have faith, to exercise faith. All we do is have a good vocabulary. Say, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. Huh? I'm praying, I'm praying. Look, I know God will make a way. Huh? I've seen him do it in my life. Huh? And you got, you got money in your pocket. Huh? You got clothes money and sandwich money. You got paper money and card money. And you tell people, I hope it work out. And then you'll come to church when we having a lesson on it. And you will say, we can't help everybody, Reverend. We don't, we don't know if they need our help or not. The truth of the matter is, you don't want to help nobody. You, you have a form of godliness, and when the church is trying to help people, you're the first one that raised your hand in this season and say, Pastor, we trying to build a church. Negro, we going to build a church. Your assignment is to give money so we can build the church and let God get the glory.